Hello YouTube and welcome again to my channel. No doubt many of you know that at this year's convention of Jehovah's Witnesses, there are going to be a number of videos shown. I've seen some of these, I'm going to make some brief comments on them. And one of them is a video showing you how to shun your family members when they get disfellowshipped. Now if you go to jw.org in the frequently asked questions section on the question is, do Jehovah's Witnesses shun? They, their answer is no. And then they go on to talk around the fact that they really do shun. So it's an interesting just juxtaposition to have that direct no, and then you can show the video where they're showing you how to shun your own daughter when she gets disfellowshipped. And they show the scene where the daughter actually gets disfellowshipped, and you watch the scene and you note that her own father looks at her with a look of disgust and hatred. Um, that's really good parenting skills for you right there. That Growing up with a father like that must have been pretty interesting. But that's the way Jehovah's Witnesses want you to be if you're a parent. So, when Jehovah's Witnesses claim they don't break up families, all you have to do is watch this video to get the real answer. There's also a video where a child's really good at playing violin and his father crushes his hopes and basically tells him, no, you're not going to go learn to play the violin better because obviously all the classical violinists in the world are on drugs and you, you can't serve Jehovah when you're playing the violin and on drugs. And never mind the fact that there's an orchestra at Bethel that actually records music. Ah, whatever. Anyways, so more great parenting advice from the Watchtower. They have this really bizarre series of videos which takes place, um, I guess, in a bunker or in a basement. And the setting of these videos is theoretically during the Great Tribulation. So this is interesting to watch. This is Jehovah's Witnesses showing you what their version of great, the Great Tribulation is going to be. A couple of interesting points. <clears throat> the elder, the lead elder in the video, is a guy named Brother Brown, the character. Uh, he always looks like he's on the verge of soiling himself, right? whatever that's about. But if you'll notice, too, like everybody in the video has different versions of the same exact personality. They all talk the exact same way, which includes individuals that are not Jehovah's Witnesses. So that is... A more perfect version of uniformity you will not find. That is the high control of Watchtower being exerted on their followers. And they are showing you how they want you to behave. So these bunker videos, we'll call them, they have a couple of different messages to them. All of them are centered around loyalty to Jehovah. Uh, one of the videos, uh, the sister begins to associate with people that work just on her coffee break. You know, so these are people she sees every single day or however often she works. Maybe she only works part-time, but she associates with them just on her coffee break, which can't be 15 minutes a day. And the watchtower is coming down now saying, even that's too much. This sister picks up some bad habits from associating with these people, you know, like learning how to actually think for yourself. And so this is a bad thing. So don't associate with anybody for any amount of time if they're not one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So... If you show a normal person this video, there's no way they're going to think this is out of place. And another interesting thing I picked up is at one point, um, one of the sisters in the video talks about how their message changed from good news to one of judgment. This is something that I've heard from time to time from Jehovah's Witnesses, that eventually their message would become more judgmental. Well, their current message is, go to jw.org, and if you have any real questions, we're not going to answer them for you now. So... It's very conceivable to believe that a message more judgmental than that is possible to be preached. Well, will they ever do it? I don't know, because right now the preaching work is almost centered on not preaching, but just directing everything to jw.org, or so it seems. Anyways, what else happens here? So then, everyone's in the basement, and what does the elder do? Well, he decides to conduct a meeting. You know, he pulls his Bible out, he reads scriptures, he's asking questions, he's getting comments... So for Jehovah's Witnesses, you have another meeting to suffer through during the Great Tribulation. I don't know which part would be worse, the fact that the Great Tribulation is going on, or the fact that you have to be in a meeting during the Great Tribulation. Uh, not a very good future to look forward to, if you ask me. Then they talk about people who would criticize teachings that they didn't agree with, and how that affected their loyalty. So let's break this down. You realize that something is wrong, and you try to point it out, and suddenly you're the bad guy. The Watchtower doesn't care that they're wrong. They just want you to smile and nod and say, Oh, yes, I'm going to go do something that I can clearly see is wrong, you know, that my conscience tells me is not right because you told me to do it. 
and because you say that you're you know, God's only organization. So once again, don't think, even if you know it's wrong, just smile, nod, and do it. That's all they care about. Then they talk about being grateful for what Jehovah gave them. And the implication here is through the organization. What they are saying is that Jehovah gives them things through the organization. This is the same thing as claiming to be inspired by God. And that is also the same thing as claiming to be a prophet. They don't use the specific word prophet in their proclamation, but if what comes from the organization comes from Jehovah, that is the statement they are making. So, by the Bible's definition and by their own definition, when things they do not foretell come, um, or when things they foretell don't come to be, they are therefore by definition false prophets. You cannot claim that things the organization provides are directly from Jehovah and then pretend to claim that you are not a prophet. Anyways, I've made that point before. So, moving on, they try to get you to control your thoughts. And they have this big thing about negative thinking and this young sister has a problem with negative thinking, and they prescribe a way for her to solve it. So they never really discuss what her negative thoughts are. Um, they could be about the organization. It could be about herself. Uh, maybe she has negative thoughts about Smurfs. I really, I don't know. Uh, they don't really talk about it, but they talk about just pushing the negative thoughts out of your mind and so on and so forth. So once again, you're seeing the level of control that the Watchtower is trying to organize over people. And as the videos progress, the brother, uh, the elder, Brother Brown, makes an interesting statement about not serving God with a date in mind. Huh. Now, why do you think that one of Jehovah's Witnesses would ever serve God with a date in mind? I mean, why would they ever possibly do that? What kind of loyal servant of Jehovah would ever serve God with a date in mind? When I was growing up, of course, this this book, uh, this came out when I was young, and the books that came out in the 80s all said the same thing, that the generation that saw 1914 would not pass away before Armageddon came. So when I was five, I certainly hadn't read the Bible for myself. I certainly hadn't picked the date for Armageddon. Uh, I had to be told all these things. I, I didn't come up with the concept of Armageddon. So believing what the Watchtower teaches you now is a bad thing. They say, Armageddon's coming. Oh, but uh, don't serve with a date in mind. But they're the ones that gave you the date. And this is the constant hypocrisy that you have to deal with from the Watchtower. It's, it's double think from 1984. You have to have two opinions at the same time and know when the right time is to pull the right one up. And the experienced Jehovah's Witness will be able to do that. I used to be able to do that. But anyways, just make sure you don't serve with a date in mind because we now know that the information in this book could be called apostasy. Whoops. Anyway, so those are just some interesting thoughts that I had. Um, watching the videos was much like having a lobotomy with a rusty butter knife if that lobotomy was performed by a kindergartner who's been sniffing magic markers all day. Truly an intellectually enlightening experience. So thanks for watching.